Hey, how's it going everybody and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod review and today we have a brand new weapon pack, specifically the Smith & Wesson Pistol Pack by Tangent24, the same author that brought us the Sig Sauer handgun pack. In this pack we are going to get 6 brand new pistols, 5 of which are going to be revolvers and 1 of which is going to be a semi-automatic handgun. So if you are looking for a buttload of revolvers, this is going to give you the most bang for your buck in one simple ESP. This is going to add, again, five new revolvers. The Smith & Wesson Model 29, the Model 586, the Model 629 Classic, and the Model 629 Stealth Hunter, which you may recognize from the Far Cry franchise. You also get the Smith & Wesson R8, which you may recognize from Rainbow Six. This is a very special version of the revolver that has eight rounds of 357 Magnum, which is pretty crazy. And there's also the semi-automatic pistol, the Smith & Wesson m and 9 Now, all of these weapons are implemented pretty nicely, though they do have a couple of inaccuracies here and there. Though, that being said, it's a lot simpler to use things like vanilla ammo types rather than implementing brand new ammo types for all of these weapons. So honestly, it's fine in my book. When it comes to actually obtaining these weapons, in the base version of the mod, they are all added to the chemistry station, though there is an additional mod out there that does add them to the leveled list. You can find it in the requirements section of this mod. As of right now, this mod is currently only on PC, but the author does say that they're going to give it a week to see if any bugs come out before they port it over to Xbox, so it should be coming to Xbox pretty soon, so just keep your eye out for that. Last thing before we check these things out in game, these weapons do use vanilla animations, though with that being said, you can add your own custom animations to them by downloading any animation replacer mods. And I'll go ahead and show you the ones I have installed later so you can see what they look like on these really, really beautiful weapons. With that, let's go ahead and hop in game and check out the stats for these guns and talk about some of the finer details of this mod pack. For starters, let's take a look at the most basic version of the revolvers, and that is the Smith & Wesson Model 29. Now, all of the revolvers actually have a pretty identical stat block, with a base damage of 48, using 44 caliber rounds, a fire rate of 6, a range of 11, accuracy of 64, weight of 4.1 pounds, and a value of 89 caps. And they're all going to perform pretty much identically. The biggest difference is their visuals, though there are a couple of reasons to use some revolvers over others, and that has a lot to do with the weapons workbench side of things. As you can see, this only has a receiver slot, and the same is true for most of the revolvers in this pack. For example, if we grab something like the 586, you can see the stat block is exactly the same, and it only has a receiver slot. Same is true for the 629 and the 629 Stealth Hunter, which is a shame because that Stealth Hunter does definitely have a mount for scopes. Who knows, maybe we'll see some additions in the future, but for right now, this thing only has a receiver section. Uh, and also, all of these do have a range of 11, which is pretty low, so I'm guessing that is unintended. We'll see if that gets patched out or not as well. Now, additionally, there is the R8, which does have a similar stat block. However, you'll notice it has more attachments available. So you can actually throw on sights as well as lasers and flashlights to this thing. And additionally, this one actually holds eight rounds in the cylinder as opposed to six. So it's definitely worth picking up this one over the other revolvers in this pack. It does make me curious as to why things like the 629 Classic and Stealth Hunter aren't just the same weapon where you could apply these parts as attachments, though I guess if you're going for immersion and realism, it does make sense to keep them separate. Now also included is that semi-automatic MNP9, which is actually chambered in 10 millimeter since there is no nine millimeter in the vanilla game. This thing has a base damage of 25, a fire rate of 66, a range of 83, which sounds a whole lot better than 11, an accuracy of 60, a weight of 3.6 pounds, and a value of 146 caps. This thing does have a lot more options at the weapons workbench, so you can really customize this thing to your liking. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm pretty sure that the reason the range on those other weapons is so low is because they don't actually have barrel attachments, and typically that has a lot to do with the range on the weapons. So... That could be it, but we'll just have to see again if that gets patched or not. Now then, like I said earlier, these weapons do use vanilla animation, so I've taken the liberty of adding some of my favorite reanimation mods and adding them to these weapons. For starters, I'm using the Battlefield 4 Revolver mod that will change the animations out for the vanilla 44, and I have applied them to the revolvers in this pack, and I gotta say, I like it a lot. It makes them feel so much beefier. I'll go ahead and let you have a look and a listen so you can see it for yourself. Honestly, I think it fits these weapons very, very well and just looks really, really nice. 
I've also added a different animation to that MNP9 by using War Daddy's one-handed reanimation for the Deliverer. Let's go ahead and check that one out as well. Now then, let's go ahead and take these over to the weapons workbench and check out all of their attachments. Again, for most of these revolvers, we just have the receiver section, which goes from standard to advanced, giving us a base damage of 48 and a maximum damage of 84 with no perks. However, we do get some more options over on that Smith & Wesson R8, which does have the options to change out the iron sights for a couple of different options like the aim point acro and the Leopold delta point, though that is it in terms of optics. You also do get some flashlight options with the surefire and the streamlight, and then again that same set of receivers. Now for the M&P, we actually do get some real attachments like the choice between the agency arm slide and the war afterburner, which is going to give you an extended slide. For the barrels, we have the short and threaded barrel. If we throw on the threaded barrel, we will have some muzzle options. For magazines, we have the standard and extended mag. For muzzles, we have the option for no muzzle, a gem tech suppressor, which appears to have its texture missing. Uh oh, we have the hybrid 46 and the Synergy Linear Compensator. Looks pretty neat. Uh, the missing texture on the suppressor is an easy fix, so don't fret if you're a user. I'm sure that'll get patched out really, really soon. We do have some caliber conversions. We can choose 38, 45, and 10 millimeter, with 10 millimeter being the default and the highest damage. For sights, we have the standard short iron sights, the option to put on some tall iron sights, the Romeo 1 Reflex Sight and the Romeo 3 Reflex Sight, the Trigicon RMR and the Trigicon SRO. Then we also do have some attachments for under the barrel here with the Streamlight and Surefire flashlights. And we also have the Viridian C5 laser with the option to have it turned off or on. And then finally, we have receivers from standard all the way up to advanced, giving us a base damage of 25 and a maximum damage of 43 with the receiver, though you can get that higher with those ammo conversions. Now then, of course, it is time to do the damage test for today's mod, and we will be running four tests against our standard Deathclaw opponents. We will be using the most basic version of the MNP9, as well as the most basic version of any of the revolvers, with, since they all have the same base damage. And then we'll be using a fully upgraded MNP9 and a fully upgraded revolver, specifically the R8 since it does have the extra magazine capacity, or cylinder capacity rather. And I'll also be throwing on the maximum pistol perks to see what these pistols can really do in the end game. So, for starters, here is the MNP9 with no attachments and no perks. Let's see how it does against a standard Deathclaw. About halfway through in one magazine. To be fair, we probably could have done that in exactly two magazines, though, with the Deathclaw flinching. We didn't get to hit his weak point the entire time. So we can chalk that up to about 34 bullets or somewhere around there. In combat, your aim's not going to be perfect anyway, so we'll just call it 30 to 40. Now then, let's see the standard revolver. Again, no attachments, no perks. Let's see how it does. We are gonna be here for a while. All right. Now then, I think the first few shots, the reason the damage seems so low is because of that really, really poor range with these. Again, having a range of 11. As soon as I took a few steps closer, it really started to put in some damage. So I think that is definitely something that will need to be addressed. That being said, about four cylinders later, we actually put the Deathclaw down. So not too bad for no damage and no perks. Let's see, though, what we can do with maximum damage. Now then, my guess is that with the Maximum Gunslinger perk, these things are going to be pretty insane. Starting with that MNP9, here's a fully modded version with the highest possible damage. And as you can see, we put down that Deathclaw in only five shots 
with 10 millimeter. And to be fair, I wouldn't blame the weapon so much for being overpowered as I would blame the vanilla perks in this game for allowing us to sling out so much damage. Now then, let's see how the maxed out revolver does with the same perk setup. We're going to go ahead and have to blame range again for that. Realistically, three or four shots with this thing if you can get point blank. Again, that range really needs to be checked out. It's an easy fix in the CK though. If a patch never does come out, it's pretty easy to do it yourself so it's not too much to worry about. Regardless, you still get some really nice looking pistols with this pack. So yeah guys, that is the Smith & Wesson Pistol Pack, again by Tangent24. Some really nice pistols in this one. Again, only a couple of little things wrong here. Just that range issue and a couple of missing textures. That is just one patch away from being a really awesome pistol pack. One that I'd highly recommend you guys check out if you're a fan of revolvers and that really nice MNP9 included in this pack. Really some good stuff and definitely a whole lot of fun to use. I definitely had a lot of fun testing these things out in combat, especially that MNP. If you guys want to try this mod out for yourself, it will be linked down in the description below as always. And again, stay tuned Xbox users. I'm sure after a patch or two, this thing will be ready to be ported over to Xbox very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating. Consider subscribing if you haven't already for more videos just like this. Big shout out to all of my patrons for supporting every single video. If you want to check out the Patreon yourself, it is linked down in the description below, though that is all completely optional. Thanks again for watching guys and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace!